Hi, I'm David Brown. I teach early modern history at Strodes. Sorry that we can't be together in the classroom at the moment for introduction day, but hopefully uh, this PowerPoint and presentation will give you some idea of what it will be like when you come and join Strodes and take A-level early modern history. Like other A-levels, you're expected to do around five hours a week homework outside of the classroom. That can involve reading, watching a documentary, writing homework essays, doing assignments, and of course, doing notes in preparation for class time. At the end of two years, you will be examined by three examinations, taking up 80% of the final mark and a piece of coursework, which will be 20%. We usually go on a number of trips throughout the year and hopefully when it's safe to do so, we will be going on trips to do with the Tower of London, uh, Hampton Court study days, history conferences where historians, some historians that we even read about will give their latest research and we visit the National Archives to look at primary documents from the medieval period. The exam board is Pearson Edexcel. Class sizes are usually around 12 to 15 in a class, so it gives us lots of opportunity to debate and discuss. And history graduates go on to a wide variety of different professions and jobs, civil service, journalism, teaching, university lecturers, archivists, marketing, law. Those are only a few, but really it's a very versatile subject. In the first year, you'll be studying mainly the Tudors, that is, the Tudors from Henry VIII through to Elizabeth I, including his other two surviving children, Edward VI and Mary Tudor. A big important period for changes in religion, for the power of the monarch, and for rebellions, so look forward to that. We move on after that, we go back in time, and we cover the Lancastrians, Yorkists, and brings us up to Henry VII and the introduction of the Tudors. So we look at the battle for the throne. In the second year, we study Luther, Martin Luther and the German Reformation. Again, a very important time for religion where Protestantism challenges the might of the Catholic Church. At the end of the first year and throughout the second year, you'll also be working on coursework, which covers the causes and origins of the Wars of the Roses. And as part of that coursework, you'll have lots of historians ideas to consider. And you will finally explain which of the causes that you've read about is the most convincing cause of the Wars of the Roses. Throughout the two years, your two main core textbooks are shown on this slide. Uh, the first one has paper one and two, that is the Tudors and the German Reformation. You'll need that for the start of the year. As we move into the latter part of the first year, you'll be needing to consult the book on the Lancastrians, Yorkists and Henry VII. Now these are the core textbooks, but we have lots of materials on our virtual learning environment known as Moodle and also, of course, a great many texts in the Learning Resource Centre. So each lesson and each time you come into college to study, you'll be expected to have an A4 file and that will contain, of course, all the notes that you build up over time. Most students have a kind of daily file that they put their current working material in and a big lever arch file at home that they can then organize into a whole course file. You'll need lots of writing paper, A4 lined paper, dividers to organize your notes and pens, pencils and highlighters for work in the class. And of course, you'll be expected to bring in your textbook and now your summer assignment. Now the details on the summer assignment <clears throat> will appear on our website, 
but your first task will be to do some research about certain Tudor individuals that will be in the worksheets or the workbook provided and that will be available for you to write in your findings from your research and when you've completed all your research on people as you can see like Anne Boleyn or Cardinal Wolsey, Henry VIII, Mary Tudor, Edward VI and Elizabeth and more you can print that off and bring that into the first lessons and it will provide a basis for the work we do, introducing ourselves to the key themes and key personalities of the Tudor period. And your second task, which will also be on the website, is to do some summer homework reading and notes on what's called the personal element in Tudor monarchy. This gives you a chance to read the kind of text that we'll be using in the A-level course, okay, over the two years. And of course, we'll introduce you to some of the main themes of this personal monarchy, which was the form of government that we're mainly going to be looking at over the two years of study. So thanks for listening, folks. Enjoy the summer. And obviously, I'm looking forward very much to meeting you in September, uh, when hopefully we will have uh, a chance to actually see each other in person uh, in the social distancing arrangements that the college will provide.